Hello and welcome to Chugging Along with me, Tim. And me, Sam. So welcome to this week's special food-based episode where later we will go head to head to be the cook-off champion. And you want to stick around to the end of this video to find out how you can easily vote for your champion. But before we get into all that excitement, we thought we'd take some time to go over how we go about cooking and storing food on our narrowboat and also how we manage to keep our food bills down to 95 pounds a month. One of the main things we do is we shop at discount stores, so like yeah. Lidl, Aldi, and actually Sainsbury's can be quite <laughs> yeah, affordable the price too, match. Yeah. <laughs> with the price match. And going to those shops means that we can buy things at a lot cheaper price, and also we do our, sh our shop on a fortnightly basis. Yeah. So that way we're only buying things that we can buy as essential items, we can only buy what we can carry. Another thing we do is that we like to make a lot of our meals from scratch, which means that we like to buy a lot of the raw ingredients, which is a lot cheaper. For example, if I'm making chicken noodles, Noodles. Yes, I could go to the supermarket mm. and I could buy the noodles ready made. I could also buy the stir fry vegetables or pre cut and pre packaged. And I could also buy the sauce already made. But that comes at a bit more of a premium. If I make the sauce myself from scratch, and if I just use any vegetables that I've got in the in the fridge, it's a lot cheaper. Another way that we try and keep our food bill down is food storage. And that basically means we buy a lot of things in cans. So mm -hmm. like canned potatoes, canned beans. Yeah, we always have a big bag of cans, don't we, <laughs> when we walk back from the supermarket. And that is because they last for a long time. We make sure that nothing goes off. Also, it doesn't take up it doesn't take up as much space in our fridge, yeah, which is quite true. small as well. So it doesn't mean that we have to keep making visits to supermarkets, which can be quite tricky. Another way that we save a bit of money is double meals. So Sam will make something fantastic, of course, yeah, and uh, it will last for two nights. So we'll have it on Monday and Tuesday, and then another one on Wednesday and Thursday, and that definitely makes the cost lower doesn't it you would you say yeah it keeps it cheaper because you, you're making a meal in bulk and then you can divide it over a, a few days or over a couple of days therefore the cost per meal goes down considerably compared yeah. to if you're having it only one day a week and the final tip of our penny pinching <laughs> is that we only buy versatile meat so we only really buy three kinds of meat from yep. the supermarket don't we so it's chicken thighs on the bone lincolnshire sausages and smoky bacon <laughs> so those things we use in multiple different dishes don't we yeah. and they're actually quite good value as well you get quite a lot for your money there are six go-to meals that we tend to have on a rotation the first one sausage pasta with kale kale's really healthy and very very delicious another one is chicken noodles I make a spicy sauce that goes with that from scratch and then also pizza night we've spoken about how much we love our pizza nights it can be a bit difficult though continuously cruising because we have to buy those pizzas on the day because yeah, we have a lot of space ones, yeah. to actually put them in our freezer so we are now started to make our own pizzas from scratch and we did that recently yeah. and um, worked out quite well very tasty it was fantastic yeah <laughs> so we have bacon chili con carne because bacon is cheaper than minced beef and has a really nice smoky taste mm -hmm. another one is the chickpea curry with homemade chapatis which i absolutely love they're so oh, so you. delicious <laughs> and finally my favorite of the lot by quite a long way i must say is the Ghanaian peanut soup with rice which is actually uh. sam's mum's recipe shout out to you eva <laughs> if you are watching I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, marinate my lamb steaks and the flavour that I'm going to go with those here is the Italian herb seasoning of course the actual risotto itself is going to be fresh mint and there will actually be a bit of mint on the topping of the steaks but more on that later so yeah what mainly what I'm going to be doing for this for the actual to marinate it in is Italian herbs and seasoning of course risotto Italian and you, you take that off here if you know what smells i'm getting a lot of oregano off that as well which is really good and of course they're just going to marinate in oil as well so what we're going to do here sam come in here and have a look uh, whilst i uh, oil these up so that's what they look like so first there we go first bit next thing to do is to add the um is to add the italian seasoning here And I want these to be audaciously herbaceous. <laughs> That's a mouthful. 
And then now, of course, not forgetting, I nearly did the king and queen of seasoning, salt and pepper. How much salt are you putting in there, Tim? Uh, it's half a pinch on each side, so each steak has a pinch. From my memory of this, this is actually very strong, so I don't want to put too much on here. I don't want it to be too peppery, I want it to be more herby. With those two lamb steaks, they're soaking in all those Italian herbs. It's now time for me to make the topping of my steak, so I'll have that prepared when they come off that barbecue, add a nice little topping to it. And that is going to be Greek yogurt with fresh mint on it, just a dollop on each one sort of sitting when it comes off sizzling. So I'm going to chop up all of this mint, obviously most of it is going to go into the risotto itself, but a bit of it is going to go on top of the steaks in the Greek yoghurt. So this is what fresh mint looks like, so it tastes completely different to polos and toothpaste, fresh mint, it is a completely other, well the first time I ever had mint tea, just a few of these in a you know, in a mug with hot water and a bit of brown sugar. Absolutely incredible. I absolutely love fresh mint and you smell it. It's just, yeah, it takes you to another dimension. Cocktail people, you might be reminded, mojitos. Uh, all of these, first thing I've got to do is take away the stalks. I had a bay leaf disaster last time, didn't I? So let's be real, I just left a whole bay leaf uh, in my uh, in my dish, so yeah, I don't want to do this this time. I'm destalking everything, make sure there's no nasty surprises. It's going to be finely chopped, and uh, yeah, flavorful as you like. Okay, so what do we do now? We chop it up nice and finely. So let's get the red knife out, the biggest of the lot, and let's chop. Is this your A1 technique, Ted? This is my A1 chef technique. You might have seen it on the television before which is where you just let the back of the knife do the work. You say that like you're always in the kitchen. I do, yeah. Greek yoghurt. And for now I'll just store it in the Where's Wally mug. Just do two tablespoons because that's all I need. Because that's all we need. I'm going to put that in the yogurt there, like so, and mix that up, and that will just come out absolutely lovely on top of the steaks. So now it is time to uh, start with the risotto. Saw that sulphur. Yeah, I've heard it's a sign of intelligence if your eyes are very sensitive to it. So. <laughs> Are you right there, Tim? Oh, it's really bad. Uh, um... Thinking of tips that you can use. People say glasses help, but I have glasses and my eyes still water occasionally, so I don't think the that makes it matter. to not chop onions. <laughs> one onion and one clove of garlic, because that is what you have to do every time you cook. So that, it, that bit is done. A bit of oil. And as well, a knob of butter and now it's time to put this uh, on the flames quarter of a litre, 250ml putting too much in there necessarily won't be a bad thing we like sherry but <laughs> You probably don't want to, you probably that won't the recipe. looks like a lot, does it? <laughs> yeah, it looks like a lot. <laughs> now it's time to put the onions and the garlic into the pot here. Let's do three fifths of this risotto rice. Shake it out, Tim, shake it out. Now it's time to add the 250 ml of sherry right Ooh. into this risotto. Right. Mm. Smell so this is going to completely change the flavour. It's going to add such depth to it. I hope you've left enough of that sherry in the bottle for us later. <laughs> there we go. Wow, look at that. Mmm. <laughs> 
seem quite impressed with yourself. I do. Well, yeah, last time, obviously, Sam used sherry in her meal and one, so maybe that's my secret tactic there. I don't know. But, yeah, wow, that looks incredible. Looks like the water's changing colour now, Tim. Yeah, so that's the start of the stock. So let's put this in here for round one. So as the, this boat goes past, we are just moving <laughs> round two. Hello. Okay, so right, what we're going to do is I'm going to bring this up to the boil, where it should almost be boiling now, so we'd let that simmer for four or five minutes, and then that is it, that is done. We will put that in the thermal thing and it will just cook on its own for an hour, and then it should be done. Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> I was going to say, are you my forgetting something? <laughs> goodness me, I forgot the most important thing in this risotto, which is, of course, the fresh mint. Is there another ingredient you're missing, Tim? Begin with P. Pepper. Not pepper. Green and P. Peas, yes. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> that's to go in as well. Oh, right, so now it's the time to add the peas as well. Stick with the plan, half a can. There we go. So that is bubbling away. That was as easy as that. That is done. That is nice and hot. So what we want to do is keep all that heat we've got there trapped inside. So all you do, pop it in there, press that down, and that's done. Whilst that is going to be uh, slowly thermally cooking, it's time to get back to these bad boys, start barbecuing these steaks. So there's bricks here for protection. We found a nice quiet bit. There is the barbecue there. Lamb steaks are done on the barbecue. They smell delicious. This is great. And let's check the risotto in the thermal cooker. Oh, you can really smell the mint here. All right, Sam, are you excited? I am. The proof is in the tasting. I'm very excited to try this. I'm very hungry, so... I'm starving. <laughs> let's get in. <laughs> right, so let's cut some of this lamb off first. There we go. It all looks delicious. And let's get some of this risotto on there as well. Here we go. And I'm going to try it without the yogurt first, just to get the flavours of these together. So here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Nice. Mm, quite tasty. That lamb is absolutely glorious, by the way. Really well done on that lamb. It looks like the risotto is cooked, uh, the rice is cooked quite well as well. Uh, let's try with a bit more of the pea. Mmm. Yeah, I think definitely a little bit more seasoning just because it's a bit sweet. Well, like I salt think, and pepper. So yeah, a little pepper. bit of salt and pepper in there because I think that um, the sherry's sort of made it quite sweet so I just need something else in there just to balance the flavours out but apart from that absolutely delicious I'm starving so I'm going to finish it which is a compliment it's a good thing <laughs> you look like you're enjoying it there got a bit of a mouth for, haven't you <laughs> mm. please vote for me <laughs> As I mentioned before, I'm going to be making a mushroom biryani and I'm going to marinate some chicken before I barbecue it. So, we're going to be starting with the marinade first. I'm going to prep my clove of garlic and also the ginger as well. So, here we go. This, oh, <laughs> you can cut that bit out. Hygiene. <laughs> you cut that bit out. I thought you were going to keep it in.
All right, so that's the garlic done. Now time for the ginger. I always have a fear that I'm gonna grate my fingers whilst doing this. Okay, just getting the excess that's on there. I want to add my spices to this. So for this one, I'm gonna start with my Madras curry powder. And I'm just going to add about half a tablespoon of that. I'm going to start with halves first, and then I can always add more later on if I feel it needs a bit more flavour. And now half of my garam masala. I only recently started cooking with garam masala actually, and I found it makes a massive difference to the curries that I've made. And now I'm going to add a tiny amount of turmeric because this, it's used in dyes, it's very, very strong. So we're going to go for a really small amount. How small? I can't really say for now. I just really want it for the colour. Now a bit of pepper in there as well. Just going to sprinkle it in. There we are. We're actually going to leave the chicken swimming in yogurt. What's the sort of thought process behind that then? Well, my thought process behind that is obviously the main different ways that you can actually marinate things. Uh, yogurt, I'm hoping that the acidity in the yogurt will help to tenderize and break down the proteins in the meat uh, for the chicken so that it can take on some of that flavor, keep it nice and moist. In the same way that you use buttermilk when you make sort of fried chicken. I've not done it before, <laughs> but mm. I've, I've heard the science behind it. Seems to be true, so we'll see. Okay, just uh, mixing that together now. Ooh. Honey, I'm not gonna put too much. I'm gonna put a little bit in first. There we go, a tiny bit more. There's a lot of yogurt in here. I think that'll be okay. So it's going to marinate whilst I'm teaching. So um, that hopefully will give it enough time to absorb all those flavours. And um, we should hopefully get the full effect of the marinade and the chicken. I'm doing a piece of chicken that I'm actually going to put onto skewers. And I'm going to put that on the barbecue. Because I'm hoping that helps it to cook a lot quicker. And more evenly. It looks more like jellyfish, doesn't it? <laughs> it feels like jellyfish. It moves like jellyfish. <laughs> Got my premium cuts in there. And now I'm going to put the premium cuts into the marinade. So here we go. Mm. Are you salivating yet, Tim? I'm not, no, because it's raw. <laughs> How much did you eat? You're raw for two grand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it, the chicken's in the marinade. I'm gonna cover that up, leave it five hours, pop it in the fridge and let it do its business. Oh, now it's time to move on to the biryani. So, because it's mushroom biryani, we need mushrooms. So I'm gonna start chopping these up. I think that's it for mushrooms, There's quite a few there. So I think that should do well for our meal. So now the mushrooms are done, it's time to move on to my onion. And Hopefully I won't suffer the same fate Tim did. I'm going to stand a bit further back. Yeah, I think you should actually, because uh, it could still catch you. <laughs> so now we're going to move to the hob and we're going to start by heating our oil. The first thing I'm going to do, which is something I've started doing, since making curries is just to heat the spices up just to sort of agitate them and get them going so they're not going in too cold so for that I'm just adding a bit of oil to the pan and I'm gonna let that heat up so to make it easier I thought let's just get the biryani mix with all the spices already um, um, prepared just to make it easier, really, because unfortunately, no pesto and mortar. Mm. Right, just gonna add a tiny bit of water, just because I don't want the onions to burn. I want them to get soft, but I don't want them to burn. So I'm adding a little bit of water in there, just to help with that process. Right, time for some seasoning. So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt in there. 
like that. All right. And for this, I'm using basmati rice. Much more. Let's pop that in. I'm just going to mix that in so I can get the flavours as well. Stir that around. Ooh. There we go. So now I'm just going to chop up a bit of creamed coconut. Now I don't know if I was actually used creamed coconut, but I use it a lot in my curries. My mum used to use it a lot when I was younger, and also my dad, they would use it in curries, and I totally forgot about it. I used coconut milk instead, and then I rediscovered it recently when we went to an Asian supermarket. And having the bat since really much more economical. It's been in the fridge, so it's really rock hard. But that's fine because actually I just want the shaving, so I'm almost shaving it really. If you try to get that through an international border, you might have a few problems, won't you? <laughs> it's coconut. It's legal. I just get a nice little hint of coconut. It's not too overwhelming. It gives a bit of creaminess as well. Right, time to pop it in. Ooh, there we go. I think that'll be enough, actually. But I'm really curious to see how it comes out. I'm just hoping to get a bit of a coconut kick in there as well, just to give an extra dimension to the flavours. Well, hopefully that doesn't damage the uh, gentle fragrances of the mushrooms. <laughs> but, uh... Hopefully it doesn't. Time to put it in the outer pot and to let it cook. There we go. And according to the instructions, you have to leave it for three hours. <laughs> so happy cooking. <laughs> there we go. Just getting up the little dregs of chicken left in there. Right. Let's wash hands first and then get the barbecue going and get these cooked. This one looking quite good, looking quite tasty. So now the chicken's done, I'm just going to wash and chop up some of the coriander. Now, time to plate up our rice. Here we go. Ooh, there we go. I'll put three skewers down. One, two, and three. Wow. And a little bit of coriander on top, just to complete the dish. And there you have it. Voila. <laughs> and on first inspection, just going on the way that it looks, I absolutely love the yellow colour of those uh, skewers of yoghurt uh, soaked chicken. Sam's favourite colour is yellow, you might have noticed that from the clothes <laughs> that she wears. See how the flavours are in the mushroom biryani. Mmm. Definitely getting a lot of ginger. Wow. think that is the most gingery meal I have ever tasted in my life. I didn't put ginger in that one. Really? Yeah. <laughs> mm. It must be that biryani seasoning. That biryani seasoning tastes like ginger to me. Or it might be the cinnamon. Oh. But it's very spiced, not as in chilli spiced as I was saying earlier. Lots of flavours going on. Obviously it's a mushroom biryani, 
I'm not getting massive mushroom vibes from this. It's got a lot of flavouring in it. It's very strong in flavour. The rice is very well cooked. It's very easy to eat, I would say. And yeah, it's got a lot of those um, South Asian flavours, authentic flavours that you would want. Let's go on to the yellow yogurt soaked chicken. Okay, so here's a skewer. Mm, barbecue. Okay, the way that is yogurt soaked, I've never, I don't think I've ever had yogurt soaked meat before. That is very well done. Everything I've said about that being potentially overpowering is definitely stopped and almost complemented by the way that that is yogurt soaked. It is very, very nice. First time cooking the barbecue, quite fun. So there we go, that is the cook off complete and you've probably made your mind up now about whose is your favourite. So now we're going to tell you how you can vote. The voting is done exactly the same way as it was in the previous cook off, mm -hmm. which is where you simply write in the comments who's your favourite was, but you must write their name in capitals. So T-I-M, all in capitals for Tim, and S-A-M, all in capitals for Sam. And then we will count the votes after six days. And whoever has the most votes after six days will be unveiled as the winner in next week's video when we get back onto the Oxford Canal. Exciting it's stuff. very exciting. <laughs> we are aware that there's some of you who watch our videos but are too shy to comment. <laughs> so this is the time for you to come into your own and leave that comment with our names in capital, the winner that you want. Preferably my name. Or I preferably was... my name. <laughs> <laughs> you want for this cook-off competition. So thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. And remember, no matter what you do in life, you've got to keep Chicken! Vote for Tim! Vote for Sam!